Cinema 4D recently added pyro simulations to version 2023. I'm going to show you the basics of how to get started and render your first pyro simulation with Arnold Renderer. First, we're going to replicate this simple simulation. Then in a second video, we'll dive deeper into the standard volume shader and how to clean up your render. For this project, I'm going to change the frame rate to 24 and I'll keep the timeline set to 72 frames long. Add a sphere to the scene and drop a vibrate tag onto it. Enable the position parameter and change the amplitude to 500 centimeters for the X, Y, and Z parameters. The frequency can stay at one. Now go to the tags menu and under simulation tags, add a pyro tag to the sphere. This will add a pyro default object to the object manager as well. Let's leave that alone for the time being. If you hit play, you should see the sphere moving around in space while the pyro generates. Let's add an Arnold quad light to the scene and position it over the simulation. Then select the pyro object and go to the object tab. Change the object properties from on export to on. Now if you fire up the IPR window, you should be seeing the pyro rendering, but it's not looking so hot at the moment, so let's adjust some of our lighting and rendering settings. Select the quad light and increase the exposure or intensity. In Arnold, the exposure and intensity parameters both make the light brighter. It's just that the exposure parameter is meant to mimic decreasing or increasing an f-stop on a camera. So exposure gives you exponential increases in brightness and intensity gives you linear increases. Go down to the volume parameter at the bottom of the window and increase the value to two. This increases the light's effect on the volume. Add an Arnold tag to the sphere and under the main tab, turn off all of the checkboxes. This will remove the sphere geometry from our render. I just want to be looking at the pyro for now. Open up the Arnold render settings and under ray depth, increase the volume parameter to eight. This parameter sets the number of multiple scattering bounces within a volume. This is useful when rendering volumes such as clouds for which multiple scattering has a large influence on their appearance. You should notice that the appearance of the pyro has improved a bit. Navigate to the materials window and go to create Arnold volume and select the standard volume. Drag that onto the pyro object. Open up the standard volume shader under black body. I'm going to play with the Kelvin and intensity values a bit to change the pyro's look. I'm not going for a photoreal look in this case, just something that's aesthetically pleasing. I settled on a Kelvin value of 4200 and an intensity value of 0.8. Next, change the scattering color to change the look of the pyro smoke. Let's add a little more detail to our simulation. Click the pyro object and change the voxel size from five to three. The lower the voxel size, the more detail you will get in your simulation, but the slower your simulation will play. So be wary of that. If you play back the sim, you'll see we're getting a little more detail now. Things are looking good, but you'll find that if you try to render this to the picture viewer as is, all that you're going to get is a black frame. In order to fix this, we're going to have to cache our sim. Select the pyro object and click the cache tab. Hit the cache button and create a folder for your .vdb sequence to save to. Then let the sim cache. Once it's done, hit the folder icon next to the file name parameter and select the first .vdb in the sequence you created. Now click to a frame that you think looks nice in the timeline and render it to the picture viewer. Bam, we've got some fire. Stay tuned for the next video where we take a more detailed look at how to improve your volume renders in Arnold. If you found this video helpful, please throw me a like down below and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next video.